he said that he couldn't and that he was yelling because it hurt. We don't know if he was yelling because he was hurt. I can yell right now. It doesn't mean I'm in physical pain. He was yelling as you were pulling his leg through the handcuff. Correct, he was. So that wouldn't indicate that it was hurting him? Not necessarily, man. On February 4th, 2019, officers Andrew Mamon and Jay Seitz were on patrol when a vehicle was being driven in a suspicious manner, such as turning off the lights as it continued to travel. When they conducted the traffic stop, they discovered that the two men inside were in possession of marijuana. Both men were then asked to exit the car. The driver gave his real name, Tariq Green, but the passenger gave the false name of Cary Grant, most likely referencing the famous film star. His real name was Dequan Grant, and he became increasingly nervous as the officers continued to question him. Grant was placed in handcuffs while the officers tried every possible means to determine his true identity. And when it was discovered, Grant attempted to flee. Mimon and Officer Madison gave chase and caught up to Grant when he tripped and fell. Somehow he managed to maneuver the handcuffs from his back to the front of his body and attempted to run again. He was prevented by Mimon discharging his taser, after which the officers were able to subdue Grant. They then tried to force Grant to return the cuffs to their previous position and threatened to use pepper spray when Grant told them he was physically unable to do as they had asked. Body cam footage later revealed Mamon forcing Grant's leg back through the handcuffs as Grant screamed in pain. You have a right to a representative of your choice, and your representative here today is... Sean Dunlap. Today's date is May 28, 2019, and the time is now 10.34 hours. Officer Mamon, there are certain things you should be aware of prior to being asked any questions. This interview is an official investigation assigned to internal affairs by the chief of police. This investigation concerns administrative matters only. Anything you say in this interview cannot be used as evidence in any criminal proceeding against you, except pursuant to Chapter 837 Florida Statutes regarding perjury. Officer Mamone, you are a principal in this investigation. Are you now on duty? Yes. The inquiring party in this inquiry is Sergeant Wesley Whited. The nature of this investigation and this inquiry concern alleged violations of RM 800-2 arrest subsection C, treatment of prisoners. This inquiry also relates to the circumstances surrounding all incidents, which took place on February 4th, 2019. Well, point of record on the INOI, the date says February 2nd, 2019, but the date is actually February 4th, 2019. I order you not to discuss any facet of this investigation with anyone except your legal representative, union representative, and internal affairs. A violation of this order will be considered insubordination, which may result in discipline up to and including termination. This order remains in effect until relieved by competent authority or the investigation becomes public record. Additionally, Chapter 112 Florida Statute prohibits your legal counsel or representative from disclosing the contents of the internal affairs complaint and investigative findings until the investigation becomes public record. A law enforcement officer or witness who knowingly provides or makes a false statement during an internal or administrative investigation may subject that officer to prosecution for perjury. Department regulations require you to answer my questions and to be completely truthful. I now order you to answer the following questions. Please raise your right hand. Do you swear or affirm the statement you're about to give us the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. You have been provided for your review, the complaint, all witness statements, including all other existing subject officer statements and all other existing evidence, including but not limited to incident reports and any audio or video recordings relating to the incident under investigation. No information of material fact relevant to this investigation has been intentionally kept from your attention and review. Now that you have had an opportunity to read and review the aforementioned case file, do you have any additional identifiable witnesses before the beginning of this interview? No, ma'am. Could you please sign and date the attachment page indicating that you were able to review the contents inside and that this stuff matches up with what's in here. Outside of your interview, Jordan has to be interviewed again. Thanks. For the record, this is an official investigation and not a formality. Officer Mimone and Representative Dunlap, do you have any questions or concerns prior to the start of this interview process regarding this investigation? I do not. No. Do you have any questions or concerns regarding this investigation as it relates to the FOP contract and Florida State Statute 
the police officer's bill of rights. I do not. We reserve any of those concerns for the grievance or arbitration process. I understand you're reserving your right to raise such issues in the grievance or arbitration process. As of today, would you like to continue with the interview? Yes. Yes, sir. Please state and spell your first and last name for the record. Uh, Andrew, A-N-D-R-E-W, Mamone, M-A-M-O-N-E. And how long have you been with us at OPD? Uh, over three years. And did you have law enforcement prior to that? Yes, ma'am. Over two years at the city of Sanford. Any more? Nope. Okay. Where are you currently assigned? Uh, vehicles for hire. Where were you assigned when um, the incident occurred on February 4th, 2019? West Patrol Division, Golf Alpha. Mamont starts off very competent, answering the questions concisely and without hesitation. For the most part, he knows what is coming, so it would have been easy for him to prepare. And how long were you in that spot? Uh, up to uh, the month of March of this year. March. From so, the date of hire. Okay, so you transferred somewhere else in March? Yeah, I transferred to East Patrol Division Kilo Alpha Mids. Okay. Um, we're here reference IR 1933. This INOI is in reference to a possible violation of RM 800-2 arrest subsection C treatment of prisoners. Did you have an opportunity to review the body camera footage related to this incident? Yes, ma'am. Did you review it? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, the other two officers in this video, these are officers Madison and Seitz, is that correct? Correct. Were you riding solo or two-man? Two-man capacity. And were you the driver or the passenger? Passenger. Um, so, originally you all conducted a traffic stop, is that correct? Correct. Okay, and then at some point you got them both out of the car and you were trying to identify who the passenger in the car was, correct? Correct. We established probable cause for a search. Okay. Um, while you all were standing, I think you were still inside the vehicle and officers Madison and Seitz were standing up and you were eventually able to um, get a positive identification on the passenger, correct? Correct. Um, at that time, he took off running away from you guys, correct? Correct. Tell me what happened after that. Uh, the Mr. Grant, the suspect, the passenger in the car who I was attempted to identify, was looking back uh, based off the false identification he provided. I used that as clues through the mugshots program to try and find his real identity. Upon finding his real identity, I guess he picked up on my uh, verbal and nonverbal cues that I have positively identified him. Uh, once I stepped out of the car, he began to run at a full sprint, I guess it would be like northwest from us, towards the entrance of Timberleaf and Greenbelt, which is uh, Timberleaf Apartments. Okay, and then what happened? Uh, due to the fact he's providing an act of physical resistance, I deployed my electronic control device after he fell, uh, popped up, and then attempted to flee again. Uh, it had a positive effect of him going to the ground. He didn't fully lock up, but he did go to the ground, which then Officer Madison and I were able to use hands-on techniques to keep him from getting up and trying to flee again. Okay. So we, you two get him under control, and you eventually stand him up, and you all walk back towards where Officer Sites is, correct? Correct. When he goes to the ground, he flips his handcuffs. His handcuffs are oh, on the front, yeah. which is mm -hmm. problematic, of course. And then myself and Officer Madison walk him back to the patrol vehicles and the original scene of the traffic stop. Okay. What happened when you get back to the original site of the traffic stop? Uh, Mr. Grant is placed in on the ground in a kneeling position, and he is told to put his handcuffs back behind his back. Is that how you were taught to handcuff somebody? I was not trained on having a suspect replace his handcuffs from the front to the rear after he has reversed them, after he has flipped them from back to the front. I have not been trained on putting his handcuffs back behind his back. Okay. Mamone is oddly specific about his handcuff training, and it isn't clear why he didn't restrain the suspect by his ankles long enough to fix the handcuffs properly. Um. How do you normally handcuff a person if they haven't been handcuffed? If they are not handcuffed, mm -hmm. you handcuff them behind the back. Okay, what if they say the handcuffs are twisted or hurting them? How do you unhandcuff them to readjust it? How would I have not been trained on unhandcuffing a suspect based on his complaint of pain. Have you ever had to adjust a handcuff on a person? Yes, How? when they're behind his back. How? 
by placing my handcuff key in a handcuff and adjusting them behind his back. Okay. So he's on the ground and you tell him to put his hands back and behind him and what does he say? He fails to comply with the order. What does he say? Uh, you'd have to play the camera for me oh. to repeat verbatim what he said. And even then, you just have to listen. I don't know for memory. The flow of rehearsed answers dries up. When asked what the suspect said, Mamon suddenly has a hazy memory. At the time, the suspect was saying that the cuffs were hurting his hands, which shouldn't be difficult for Mamon to remember. physical attempt, but he says he tried to. Okay, but he said he tried. That's what he said. That's what he said, man. He's not even trying. So when he says he's not even trying, is he just laying flat, or what is he doing at that point? He laid, I can't see on your... Okay. Um, you do see a little when it pans back and forth. When he originally laid on slide, I can't he... see his full body on your body camera right now. During none of this. I'm like, I can't see his body. I see his foot. Yeah, that, oh, exactly. So you see his foot. I'm, I recall from him with his legs outstretched, not attempting to even bring his knees to his chest to flip the handcuffs. Okay. And he says he can't. Yeah, but he hasn't physically tried, and he says he can't. Correct. Okay, well, there's some things that I know I can't do without having tried, but I understand what you're saying. You're saying you didn't try. Correct. You want to do it, you want me to do it for you? What does that mean? I'm about to unstuck you. I can't recall you because I can't see him. You said it. What does it mean? I I can't recall because I can't see him. He said, I don't know what he means by I'm stuck, so therefore I don't recall what I meant by I can't unstuck you. And why were you going to pepper spray him? If he provided physical resistance, my use of force choice probably would have been pepper spray. Let's go. Pepper spray seems like overkill for someone who is cuffed and on the ground. From the video, there is no sign that Mamone was in any sort of danger, so it is hard to understand why additional measures would have been necessary for that situation. of shaking the pepper spray. I I don't recall. I want to shake the pepper spray.
Are you doing you want me to do it for you? Okay, we'll do it for you. I didn't even touch you. Put your leg back around. Go on, put your leg back around. I cannot, my Lord. I okay, he said, I cannot. And now you're forcefully pulling his leg through the handcuffs. Why are you pulling his leg through the handcuffs? To get them repositioned to the rear. He said that he couldn't and that he was yelling because it hurt. We don't know if he's yelling because he's hurt. I can yell right now. It doesn't mean I'm in physical pain. He was yelling as you were pulling his leg through the handcuffs. Correct, he was. So that wouldn't indicate that it was hurting him? Not necessarily, man. Why else would he be yelling? For any various reasons. Draw a crowd. They see if you get attention of people the apartment. That's a common thing that we see when we're out on patrol. People will scream even in the back of a patrol car just to get people to the scene. Okay. Mamone's tone has become defensive, showing that he knows that he was using too much force during the situation. No, you can't. Bro, You're not trying. You just did. Bro, I just saw you do it. Oh, no, that's all right. He said, I'm trying. I can't. And you're still forcefully pulling his leg through. Why are you still pulling his leg through? Same answer to get his handcuffs repositioned to the rear. But he's saying that he can't do it. Why are you pulling his hand through? If it's hurting him and he says he can't do it, it's not going to work. We don't know if it's hurting him. And the same answer to put his hands behind his back. We'll get it. We'll get it. Go on, see your foot through. I see people do this every day. Ah! Come on. Come on. Stop. Put yourself fighting me and just do it. No, you're not. No, you're not. Put your foot around. around. That wasn't that hard. Now do the other one. Do the other one. Put the handcuffs back behind your back. Go on, do the other one. I'm not taking this off. Your cuffs aren't going back. You already ran once. I'm going to take them off. Put your other foot. I'll do the other one. So you didn't want to reposition the handcuffs because you haven't been trained or because he already ran once? I haven't been trained in repositioning a suspect who has fled from the scene, who has flipped his cuffs on the ground to reposition him in his back, ma'am. Okay, so you didn't have control of the prisoner? No, I never said we didn't have control. I said I've never I'm asking trained. you, did you have control of him? I can't say we did. It's not a trick question. Just well, it is because it depends on your definition of control. Was he free to go? No, ma'am, he's detained. Did you have physical control of him? Like I said, that determines on your definition of control. If I put him in the back of my patrol car, would you say I have physical control? But I don't, even though he's detained in the back of the patrol car. Can he, is he free to leave? No, he's detained, ma'am. Okay, um, is he under arrest in the back of the car? Yes, at this point he's under arrest. Okay, so what was stopping you from unhandcuffing him and putting the handcuffs behind his back? I've never been trained to do that. You've never been trained to unlock a pair of handcuffs? Not from a person who has fled and lied about his name. That has nothing to do with you unlocking a pair of handcuffs. Nothing. Have you been trained to unlock handcuffs? To unlock handcuffs? Yes. Not when they're from Have his body. Have you ever been trained to unlock handcuffs? That's all I'm asking you. Not in the front of That's a person's going. body. Can we take a break? You sure can. No. 10.50 hours.
There's an argument in the hall during the break, which, for ethical reasons, should not have taken place. It calls into question if this is truly an investigation or merely going through the motions so the proper paperwork can be filled out. We are back in the interview room at 10.54 hours. At what point did you realize um, that Mr. Grant had a warrant? I believe just after Sergeant Ospina shows up to do his response to resistance. So the handcuffing and the hand, moving the handcuffs around, all of that was already done, right? And he was in by the car? He's being interviewed by Sergeant Ospina by the Ford Explorer. So the handcuffing thing was done on the ground? Correct. And what was his warrant for? Uh, attempted homicide out of North Charleston, South Carolina. Officer Dunlap. Can we back the video all the way up to the beginning, please?
looking for when they ran. Mm -hmm. It's around 2813. Where's the, uh, 20? Yeah. I'm offering a first day just like this. Yeah, that's because your face is in dirt. Did you hear him win some pain when he pulled his hands up to the front? Yes, sir. That's it. Do you want to clarify or add any statements made by you during this interview? No, ma'am. Is the testimony you provided true and correct? Yes, ma'am. Do you have any additional identifiable witnesses that may have evidence of material fact in this investigation? Uh, none of the ones listed here on the sheet. Okay. This concludes our interview at 1057 hours. The line of questioning changes once they return to the room and the interview is concluded with an almost painful amount of haste. After an investigation by Internal Affairs, it was determined that Officer Andrew Mamone acted with unreasonable force. The suspect was of a smaller build than the officers, was unarmed, and was never violent or threatening with the officers. The probes from the taser were still attached, so that could have been used again if action was necessary. As recommended, Officer Mamone was suspended for 24 hours without pay. He grieved this suspension, but the grievance was rejected. Arbitration for the suspension lasted a week and included roughly 1,500 pages of filed exhibits and multiple body cam videos. The story flared briefly in the media and was then dropped in favor of newer stories. Once out of the public light, all disciplinary measures against Officer Mamone were overturned and he continues to work on the force. Only time will tell if this experience will change his treatment of suspects or if it will only embolden him to continue to act as he had before.